Welcome to the Get Fit Guys Quick and Dirty Tips to Get Moving and Shape Up. My name is Brock Armstrong and I am the Get Fit Guy. When it comes to choosing a personal coach or a fitness trainer, the options, well, they can be overwhelming. So today I asked some of my coach friends to come and give us their advice on how to choose someone who will work best with and for you. For years, I got all my training ideas and my programs out of books and magazines and websites. And I have to say that it worked pretty darn well. I actually trained for several reasonably successful marathons and a few triathlons, following and adapting programs that had actually been given to my cousin by his coach years prior. Eventually, however, through a Canadian running magazine, I was awarded the opportunity to work with two coaches, a nutritionist, and was then sent all the running gear that I could ever want. Yeah, I was spoiled. And that is when I truly began to understand the power of having someone knowledgeable in your corner. Now, a personal trainer is... By definition, a certified professional who has trained for, and hopefully passed, an examination on varied topics such as anatomy, physiology, nutrition, biomechanics, exercise, and of course movement. Occasionally, a personal trainer or coach also has a college or university degree in exercise science or a related field. On the other side of the spectrum, some of them have been professional athletes in the past or are just people who simply love the sport and understand it at a deeper level than most of us can comprehend. The purpose of having a personal trainer or a coach is to have someone who will help you reach your fitness goals faster than you could do by yourself. They may even help you identify what your fitness goals should be. Now, either way, the idea is to outsource much of the thinking and the planning that's involved in developing a fitness routine, and you want to outsource that to someone who understands it and organizes it better than you do. So what do you do to choose the right personal trainer? Well, finding the right fitness trainer, it's a lot like choosing a teacher, a mentor, or even a doctor. You want to choose carefully. With the right personal trainer, you can achieve your fitness goals faster and safer, but the wrong personal coach can leave you, well, tired, frustrated, injured, and broke, financially and physically. So, to help you make this choice, like I said, I've asked four friends, two of which have actually coached yours truly, to record themselves giving their advice on what they would look for in a personal trainer. And after they're done, I will wrap things up with my own suggestions on how to ensure you get what you're looking for. Let's kick it off with my friend and former professional triathlete, Brad Kearns. Hi, it's Brad Kearns, good friend of the Get Fit Guy and host of the Get Over Yourself podcast, co-author of the New York Times best-selling Keto Reset Diet with my man Mark Sisson, and the Guinness World Record holding speed golfer for the fastest hole of golf ever played. You can find me on YouTube having some fun pursuing passionate competitive goals throughout life. And you know what? I'm a independent, free-thinking, self-motivated guy. I thought I didn't always need a coach over the years, especially when I was competing on the professional triathlon circuit. I thought I knew everything and could make the best decisions for myself and was unwilling to kind of give myself over to uh, a coaching program or a team environment. But what you learn over time is the value of having a voice of reason and a positive influence in your life and getting a winning coaching relationship going. So probably the first step, the most important thing, is to choose wisely, my friends. Find someone who is a good fit with you. Of course, you want to coach with experience and possibly certification, but definitely look under some other rocks too. Don't just go for the most popular or prominent coach that hit you hard with an advertisement. Maybe some people in your local area because in-person face-to-face occasionally is a really winning strategy that can leverage a lot of indirect communication, of course, with the convenience factor being important too. But if you're having to list attributes, things to look for in a coach, I got to say number one is someone who walks their talk. Way more important to me than their experience, their credentials, 
is the practical application of their own coaching philosophy into uh, winning lifestyle behaviors. Doesn't mean they have to be a great champion of the the sport that you're pursuing. They could be a recreational enthusiast like yourself, but they're successfully balancing their uh, fitness athletic goals with family life, uh, being a kind, generous, happy person, and all those attributes. So I think getting into a uh, general discussion rather than a discussion focused on your athletic goals, your fitness goals, uh, finding out who they are, what are their hobbies, a little more about their personality is a great starting point. And then you can start talking business at the appropriate time. But I want to have a great feel for the social connection as a starting point, because that's the greatest value of the coaching relationship. It's not the logistics or the mechanics. Go on YouTube. You can find as much coaching information as you can ever digest in your life. But having a personal connection, boy, that's valuable. It's worth the investment. And think about all your discretionary expenses in your life. And if one coach is more expensive than the other, or it's a little bit of stretch to your budget, I'm going to ask you and challenge you, what is more important than having a winning person in your corner to coach you to be the best that you can be in all areas of life? Even if your coach is just limited to your fitness goals, being successful, disciplined, motivated, organized, that's going to carry over into your career goals and into your family life and all the other things and endeavors that you do. That's what's so fun about striving for peak performance in a distinct area like fitness or athletics is the carryover and the leverage that you create. Good luck. And hey, thanks for listening to me. You can listen more at the Get Over Yourself podcast or visit bradkerns.com and find all kinds of fun things, including cool videos. Okay, that was great, Brad. Now I'll keep things rolling and move on to Megan Omley, who actually coached me over at MetPro. Take it away, Megan. This is Megan Omley. I'm the Director of Coaching and Client Experience at MetPro, a world-renowned concierge nutrition, fitness, and lifestyle coaching company. What I look for in a coach is, first and foremost, trustworthiness. I want to make sure that the person that is coaching me is somebody I can talk to openly and freely. Another thing I look for is somebody who has a communication style that I respond well to. I'm somebody who I need to know why I'm doing what I'm doing when I'm doing it. Otherwise, I'm just going to go through the motions and not get the most out of it, or I just simply won't do it. So somebody who can communicate with me, and then also somebody who knows their stuff, somebody who's really knowledgeable in the type of coaching that I'm looking to get from them. I also look for somebody who is willing to engage with me, who seems to be passionate about the work that they are doing, somebody who is caring, who understands that life is a balance and maybe whether it's my sport or my nutrition or what have you has to fit within my lifestyle as well. And so being able to work with me in truly who I am as an individual with my schedule and all those sorts of things um, is another thing that I look for when looking for a coach. I know personally, being a coach myself, those things are really important to our clients here at MetPro having an understanding for somebody's schedule and what they're going to be able to do and accommodate as far as their nutrition or their fitness is extremely important because if it's not realistic and they can't execute, then what's the point of setting those as our goals? So making sure that it's a good balance for their lifestyle is extremely, extremely important. But like I said, somebody who is trustworthy, dependable, their communication style fits my Myself, somebody who engages well and is passionate about what they do and cares about me as an individual and helping me reach my goals is really, really what I personally look for in a coach and also what I think at least our clients here at MetPro look for as well. Okay, carrying on our how to choose a coach conversation, let's move on to Jeff Tripp, who actually coached me using an app called Trainiac. Jeff Tripp here from uh, Trainiac, checking in to uh, give you my feedback on uh, what I would look for in a trainer uh, and a coach. I'm currently the head of fitness for a uh, startup fitness app company called Trainiac, and we are a mobile fitness platform, and uh, pretty much our our main mission here is to connect uh, trainers with clients in a mobile platform, provide a high-quality experience, almost like you have a personal trainer in your uh, pocket, 
but we also are more than that. We're also uh, kind of a, a more holistic approach to our programming where we try to pull everything that our clients are doing into uh, their fitness and their health goals and making sure that we're accomplishing kind of this holistic approach into uh, making sure their, their goals are being attacked and everything as opposed to just focusing on just delivering fitness content. Um, so that's kind of the main mission there of Trainiac. Um, I have a BS exercise science, CSCS, uh, ECSM, um, exercise physiologist, et cetera. A bunch of certifications. I've been in the fitness industry for about 15 years. And I think, you know, it's, it's when people always ask me, you know, you're a trainer and what do you look for in a coach? Like, would you ever want to get a trainer? And, um, you know, I, since I worked with trainers for so long, I still do. Um, I'm always pulling help and stuff from from other trainers about how to be motivated and and coach things like that. But some of the, the, the key things that I would look for in a trainer or a coach, uh, n- number one is, is accountability. I would really want my trainer to be uh, keep me accountable and hold me to a certain standard, make me sure I'm, I'm attacking my goals, moving forward every day, keeping me focused, highly motivated, and someone that plans things out for me. I like to know what I'm doing all the time. Um, it keeps me focused, keeps me on track. Um, but yeah, you can't, you can't really go wrong with those two things. Um, really, I think accountability, motivation are, are huge for me. And having someone that's technically savvy as well in terms of being able to dig deeper into maybe a little nagging injury that I might have is really key as well. But um, I'm, I'm always happy to cl- collaborate. It's really kind of fun collaborating with other coaches and having someone be like, hey, give me like, you know, three or four strength routines that I can do in the gym this week. Um, something new that's fresh for me. I, I really love kind of that type of stuff in the strength com- condition community. So uh, yeah, hope that's helpful. Keep up the great work and we'll talk later. Short and sweet, Jeff. I like it. Now to wrap it up, I give you Katie Bowman, my friend and biomechanist over at Nutritious Movement. Hey there, this is Katie Bowman. I'm a movement teacher, founder of Nutritious Movement. And this is what I look for when choosing a trainer or coach. So I was thinking about this and I'm going to give you my th- my three, but not in a, necessarily in the order that I prioritize them. So the first one is tone and clarity in communication. So I look for a more positive vibe, use of language in written, like if if I look at your Instagram or if I look at emails that you sent, I want to make sure that the way you speak makes sense to me, that I'm not wondering what it is that you're implying or what you're saying. So communication is a big deal. And the uh, second one, or I guess this would be 2.5 or 3, depending on if you like whole numbers, Uh, Authenticity and honesty. How does your platform communicate how how often you do the thing that I'm using you as a coach for? So I'm thinking movement because that's what I teach. But I've used coaches for all sorts of different things. And so I'm going to look at if you are marketing yourself as someone who teaches a particular thing, how not only how well you do it, but how often you do it. How how much of your life does it permeate? Because to me, that's part of an, an honesty or an authenticity if you're all about the thing. So I tend to seek out instructors who are, are all about the thing in a healthy, balanced way. Um, I'm sure there's some things where it wouldn't be that case. But in general, I'm, I'm looking... I'm looking to see if if that comes across in communications or marketing materials. The third one, or no, I guess it's the fourth one, which is the most important to me, is scalable teaching. And so this is a little bit different than knowledge base. When we're looking for a coach or a trainer, we're looking for that person who knows more than we do. They do it better or they have, or maybe they don't do it at all, but they have an, an amazing system for teaching it or passing it on. And I make that allowance because there are many people who, I'm just thinking of a couple of sports coaches that I know that don't actually do the high level thing that they coach other folks to do, but they're really good at knowing how to get someone to the place that that person wants to go. So scalable teaching is a little bit different than having a set of things that you teach where they're not really adaptable to a wide group of people. And this can happen when people are brand new and starting to teach a thing. Oftentimes their training is new. Their experience 
is low. And so they're, they're trying to teach, you know, a set of 20 steps or, you know, a hundred exercises or 20 exercises or whatever it is. And they do those 20 well, but in the case of teaching anything or coaching anything, what you have to be able to do is, is match your information to the person that comes into wanting that knowledge. And it is about being able to still maintain what you're teaching, but knowing that maybe, let's say, for example, you offer 10 things, 10 steps, 10 moves, maybe a person isn't ready to do four of them. So do they not get those four? Or can you take the four that they can't yet do that aren't accessible to them and figure out how to give a step towards that thing so that so that someone isn't getting 60% of what you offer. They're always getting 100% because of the coach or the trainer's ability to quickly assess the situation and bring and bring an element in so that everyone is always moving to whatever it is that they came to you to learn. So to me, that's scalability. When you are able to scale things, it means that my investment in my time with you is going to be more valuable because you can meet me where I am, not only by modifying or taking things away, but by knowing how to add that extra bit that I need. So stepwise or scalable teaching, definitely most important. If you want to see the way that I teach movement, you can find me on Instagram slash nutritious movement or nutritiousmovement.com. Awesome. Thanks, Katie. Now, I don't want to come off as sounding lazy or anything, but the great thing about being the last person on a list of smart folks like this is that I can basically say all of the above, or maybe ditto. But what I will add to this guide is some ways that you can ensure that you get the type of coach that my guest trainers just prepped you on. Now, number one, I would say make sure you sit down with or have a face-to-face -face call with the coach before you make your decision. This should be a get-to-know-each-other type of call, not a coaching session. Honestly, if a coach you are considering doesn't suggest this as a first step, I likely wouldn't trust them. That would indicate to me that they don't hold the coach-client relationship in high enough regard. Now, my second tip is to look at their credentials, but also look at their experience. Now, take me, for example. I have a few certifications and some training courses under my belt, but I also have a unique background in not only team sports like hockey, but also broad movement like ballet. I also surround myself and ally myself with some really smart and knowledgeable people in the industry, as is evidenced by this podcast. And as Brad Kearns pointed out at the beginning of this podcast, you can tell a lot from my social media platforms that, well, I walk the talk. And that's the kind of coach you want. And number three is, if a coach does not ask you about your lifestyle, your time commitments, your family life, your sleep, your diet, your stress levels, well, then they will not be able or perhaps willing to coach you on your terms. It means they will just give you workouts that they want you to do without knowing whether you can actually get them done, how they're affecting you, or if they can fit into your lifestyle. And in that case, well, you may as well be downloading workouts from YouTube. And this is my biggest piece of advice. I mean, you hired a coach because you wanted a coach, not a workout generating machine, right? Right. When the day comes that you decide to take the next big step along your awesome fitness journey and hire a professional, well, I hope this podcast helps you determine if they are the right person to help you maximize your movement time, prevent injury and burnout, and see some awesome fitness results. As we found out from Brad, Megan, Jeff, and Katie, there is a distinct line between making a good investment in your fitness future and simply throwing your money at someone and hoping for the best. Use this advice to choose the right person who will help you set your correct exercise goals that will help you achieve your specific fitness goals. All right, everybody, thanks for listening. And don't forget to tune in next week when I'm going to talk about how quickly you can actually get fit.
And I think my answer is going to surprise you, so don't miss that one. Now, what are you waiting for? Get out there and find yourself a coach.